Now that we've got our basic functionality in place and our program's working as we'd like it to, we can add in some more robustness and flexibility by adding in input validation, so checking what the user's typing in and making sure that's not going to, to crash our program. The first thing we're going to do is consider the situation when the user might type in something that's totally inappropriate. So we want them to type in a number, but they might type in, in this case, the word 8 instead of the number 8. Because we're using this int function to convert our input to an integer, if it's not an integer, that will cause the program to crash. Uh, but we can catch that and protect ourselves from that by using a try accept block. This is the general syntax for a try accept block. Uh, the sections in yellow here are the key ones. In some ways it's kind of like a conditional structure, an if statement, in that it will try this first section, and if it can do that without causing an error, uh, that will be fine and the program will just carry on and you'll ignore this part down the bottom. However, if this first section where you're trying something here, if that causes an error, it'll jump down to this accept value error part and do what's down there. So in this example, we're asking the user to type a number in. Um, if we can convert it to an integer, then it'll be absolutely fine, it'll run through, otherwise we'll say it's not an integer. So let's have a look at this code in action now, the same code that we had on the previous slide. If I click run, and type in a number, we'll see it prints out the number, your number is 10, just like we'd expect from this line here, and we don't even execute this code down the bottom. However, if we run the code a second time, and type in some text, it will say not an integer. Now if we hadn't used this try except block, that would cause our program to crash. Now this code is working, but it's still not an effective program, because when we get down to the bottom of our code, if they have put in the wrong type of input, uh, our program will just end, we won't ask them to do it again. So we need to introduce some sort of loop, some sort of repetition, uh, to make this happen. So in this slide, I've taken that whole try except uh, block and put it inside a while loop. And this loop uh, just uses true as its condition, so previously we might have said if x is less than 10 or something like that, and what we were really looking for there is if that condition evaluates to true. If it is true, then we execute the loop. By doing it like this, the condition is true all of the time, so it means we'll continuously do the loop until this break command is, is reached. Now this break command here is nested inside the try, so we'll only reach that if everything executes appropriately without causing an error, because remember if we have an error in this line here, we'll jump straight down to our accept value error section, therefore missing the break, and then going back up to the start and continuing our loop. If we have a look at the code line by line, uh, we initiate the loop here, the try section we're going to try and convert the input to an integer, if that causes an error we jump down to accept value error, print not an integer, and then go back to the start to try again. If they get it correct, if they enter a correct integer, we'll print out the correct statement and then break, which will end the loop and go down to the following statement. So now I'm going to implement that while loop into my previous code. So there's only a couple of lines of code to add. I can select all of those, all that whole block of code, and just press the tab key to move it across one level so that's indented and therefore part of my while loop and I need to make sure I enter this break command. Uh, without that we would have an infinite loop and our program would run forever. So let's just quickly test that that's working. If I enter a number, prints out that success statement and that program ends. Let's actually just add a print statement underneath which is not part of the loop, remember because it's not indented so it's no longer part of this loop here. and we'll just say that success, end of program. So run it one more time, enter the number 1, and we've got this success command down here. Now let's try some inappropriate input. And you can see it's all working nicely, it's saying it's not an integer, and it continually goes back and tries again until we enter something that is appropriate, and it will end our program. So have a play around with those concepts and those ideas. Make sure you can get a basic while loop working with a try except inside it, uh, and then we'll go on to the next challenge. Right, so it's challenge time again. If we go back to our guessing, guessing game, uh, I want you to make use of that try except block we've just looked at so that your program doesn't crash if the user enters some inappropriate input.
You'll need to think about um, what kind of loop you need for this. In fact, do you even need to add another loop? Or do you already have a loop that you can incorporate this code into? Have a think about that, get your code up and running, uh, pause the video and then we'll come back and have a look at one possible solution. Welcome back, let's have a look at my version now and what I've done is I've just decided not to introduce another loop because we already have this while loop here that will continue until the guess is equal to the target. So I've just added in my try accept block at the start so that if they enter something invalid here we'll go to this print statement. Now if we think about what's going to happen actually here, if they do enter in something that's not valid, we're going to print this statement and then because we're still part of this loop, we're going to carry on down to these next lines of code here. So that means we're going to go all the way down through here and then back up to the start, which is a little bit inefficient. So rather than doing that, we can add another special command, just like the break command we looked at earlier, and this time it's continue. So rather than breaking out of the loop, what this is going to do is restart the loop. So we're going to go right back to the start without having to execute the rest of the code here. This will just be a little bit more efficient and save some processing time. To test the program this time, I'm not going to run it in the Replit website. Instead, I'm going to use pythontutor.com. So this is the home page that you'll see if you go to pythontutor.com. And I'm just going to click on Start Visualizing Your Code. And up here, I need to make sure that I've chosen 3.6, Python 3.6. By default it starts at 2.7, so make sure you've got Python 3.6 selected. You can paste in your code and then click Visualize Execution. What this will allow you to do is to go through your code line by line and see what's stored in the variables at each point and to see the order in which the lines are executed. So I'm going to start off by clicking forward down here and you can see the red arrow shows the line that's going to be executed next. The green arrow shows the line that's just been executed and you can see your output up the top. So I'm just going to go th quickly through these first few lines because they're just print statements. And now it gets to our first input statement, entering your name, I'll type it in down here. Click submit. And you'll see now we have this global frame which shows us uh, the values that are stored in our variables. So we have a variable called name and we have the text string Mr. Harding inside it. So I'll keep going forward, we've got a few more print statements. Now we've created another variable using our random number and you can see that we've got 49 here. Create another couple of variables, guess and count and their values as well. And now we're about to get into our loop while guess is not equal to target. And we can see quite clearly that guess is not equal to target so we will go through this loop. And into our try accept block. So now if I enter in an invalid input, you can actually see up here that it comes with a comes up with a, an error message, uh, but our program won't crash, remember, it'll, it'll still show the error message because we're still in the try accept, but if I click forward, it jumps down to the accept section. And in our output, you'll see that we say you need to enter a whole number, and we're down to the continue statement. So now we'll see that rather than going down to this following line, we'll go straight back to the top of our loop. Okay, so I'll go back through it, and I'll enter in a, a legitimate guess this time. And now we'll continue on down through our loop. Okay, so I'm not going to go through the whole of the program like that, but it's really useful for you to step through your code using pythontutor.com, see what's in the variables, and really see what's happening in your code, and understand the order in which those lines of code are executed. Before you move on to the next video, go back and have a look at some of the previous programs that you've created, copy and paste them into Python Tutor, and take some time just to step through them and really understand what's going on.